All right, everyone, this is All Sorts of Esports once again. I'm usually on camera, but I am not this week because we have a special guest and we are doing things a little differently, which I am very excited. So as you guys know, this show makes esports simple. Um, it's a very casual talk through show that you can probably just put your phone or laptop on the counter while you're making dinner or something and listen to. <laughs> but this will be a little different because you might have to watch the video of what we're talking about. So I will let the gentleman who is with me introduce himself and then we'll get rolling right in. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Jesper Ben Lamankens. I uh, come from Denmark, so this is all new to me, but I'm happy to be here on all sorts of esports. I usually work as a shoutcaster, but being here today is going to be very interesting because it is still analytical and that's what I usually do. Great, so first off, well just this whole weekend, as I hope all the viewers know, the North American LCS Spring Playoffs quarterfinals was began. So it was, I'm just going to spoil it right now, um, we had two very <laughs> interesting series of games. So Cloud9 went down to Team Liquid 3-0 in a pretty even across um, the three games. However, Team Liquid was just able to pull it away every single game, uh, showing the extremely better macro, in my opinion, and many of the casters. And then the TSM game, they went down for the first time before reaching the finals ever in North American LCS history, losing 3-1 to Clutch Gaming on the back of some serious uh, thresh plays with Hakuo, which we'll be talking a little bit later. So the first thing that we are going to talk about, well, I guess as a little intro, we're going to be talking about three main points just to keep this video nice and short and interesting for you guys. So as you can see, um, I'm going to keep it small just so everyone can see really nice. Um, we have this Team Liquid Cloud9 game. 27 minutes in, even Dragons, one kill, one kill, almost even gold. So, Mr. Colorcaster Analyst. <laughs> yes. Let me know in these people's next solo queue game or when they're watching these pros, when they're watching LCK over in Korea, mm -hmm. what choices these two teams have to do right now? Well, when you are in a mid game, which you are right here 27 minutes into the game, you want to look at the two team compositions. Looking over towards Cloud9, they obviously have a Mariana and the Estrel, and that means that they are looking to scale up. They also have the Sajani, of course, to be that late game tank alongside the Gnar. So they don't want to force anything right here. They are s only starting to become really strong. They have uh, the Trinity Force and the Muramana coming in from uh, Sneaky. Uh, you have Jensen, who only has two items right now, one of them being defensive, so he's not in a position to fight either. And over on the side of Team Liquid, they really want to fight. You have a Seer who has three items, so he's fairly ahead of Jensen. You have a Doublelift who has the Arcane Command and also have the Rapid Fire can the Essence Reaver, which means he has a fairly strong mid game right now. Um, you also have X Smithy with the Skarner who can initiate fights. On top of that, uh, the new Swain pick is super strong because he doesn't drain mana when he's in his ult. Um, this means that their mid game is just so much better than Team Liquid's and with them also having two Mountain Drakes, trying to get control over the Baron is crucial for them. So if you have a better mid game team fighting composition or, or just a better mid game composition overall, you have two Mountain Drakes as well, you want to start looking towards like the Towers or Baron buffs. And in this game, it would be so much easier to get the Baron because of the immense amount of wave clear there are on the side of Cloud9. Very cool. And moving on throughout, so you talked about the Mountain Drakes and mm -hmm. the burning down. Who do you think any team right now has the potential to really burn it, even with those two drags? I know, is Jin even a fast burner, you think, or not really? <laughs> oh, no, no, he's not really in a position to burn it down very fast, but you have put Belter, who is in a position to do so. He has both the Void Stuff and the Nash's Tooth, and with those two items, he can burn it down. You have the extra attack speed, and with the Soldiers, someone like Isil will just deal so much damage. And on top of that, um, 
just having these two extra carries. I know that both Swain and Jin aren't just, uh, the fastest Baron takers, but they will be able to just add some damage on top of it, and obviously having those two carries means that they can burn through the Baron faster, and therefore Baron would be the ideal situation to go for for Team Liquid right now. Very cool. And then, so if Team Liquid jumped on this Baron, and mm -hmm. Sejuani obviously has the jump over the wall, do you think that they, yeah. want, they would want to pull off the Baron, since Skarner doesn't have flash up, um, you think they would wait for Cloud9 to overextend a little bit, then go for a team fight? You think that's a good idea, or...? You see, now that's a good question, because on one side, Team Liquid, obviously, with Jin and uh, Skarna, they have the possibility to initiate a fight. Obviously, it's hard to do it with Skarna because of him having to flash down, as you mentioned. But with Jin, you can lock someone down. On the other side, uh, you can just start up the Baron, then uh, if we go for the scenario that you mentioned with uh, Svenska just jumping over the wall, I would say that you can just turn around onto him, because you do have the Impale up fairly soon on X Smithy. That means that you can, in case Svenska jumps uh, into the pit, just uh, burn him down really fast, and then Cloud9, they won't really have an answer, and they'll have to look for a Shockwave steal, or perhaps an, a steal coming in from uh, Sneaky. Okay, very cool. So you think Team Liquid just has the slight upper hand, but do you think they have the upper hand, or do you think it would mostly come out just on the micro playmaking of it? No, I would pretty much say that they have the upper hand. Again, Cloud9, they aren't in a position to fight, mainly because of their carries still scaling up. So they have the upper hand. Obviously, if Jensen can land a super good shockwave, then he will be able to perhaps turn the fight around but it's just such a slim chance for him to be able to land that shockwave so in every fight mainly Team Liquid at this point in the game would just be stronger than Cloud9 because Cloud9 needs at least 10 more minutes before they can really start to fight Okay, very cool. So do you have anything else to say about that? Otherwise that all makes sense to me I I would say that if you're looking in your solo queue game right here, if you have the composition from Cloud9, obviously just trying to clear away the vision from Team Liquid would be the way to go. Obviously Cloud9, if uh, they go into the Baron Pit, then they should be in a position to scare Team Liquid off, because as long as Liquoris are close to having a Mechanar and you have your um, your Gazel Prison coming in from Svenskaren, You'll have so much uh, crowd control that obviously Team Liquid, they'll have to be very careful about moving in towards the bounce. So just try and coordinate your crowd control if this was your solo queue game. Okay, very cool. So most solo queue games obviously don't have the best coordination, but if you got some good <laughs> friends, obviously... That would well, help. <laughs> I, 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 I would say that uh, my solo queue games are fairly coordinated, but that's just because I always type too much in those solo queue games. I uh, I usually go for the shoutcaster, sorry, not the shoutcaster position, the, um, the shot caller position, but that doesn't mean that people, they always listen to me. Yep, exactly. <laughs> True that. So, moving on, we'll, move, we'll make this nice and big. So, I think that's all the questions we had. Yep, so that's all I had for that one. So, this second game. Um, so, this is mm -hmm. at the end of the dynasty of TSM already here. Uh, Clutch Gaming <laughs> is up two, two games. TSM just won that first game in a big stomp. Um, and then Clutch Gaming just kind of grinded them out that second game. And the third game, just a quick, easy win. Uh, you saw most of the Clutch Gaming players kind of laughing and snickering towards it towards the end of it just because they're having a little fun um they knew that tsm was obviously a little tilted so you move into this fourth game and you see a lot of damage and you see a bot lane that should have priority with the lethal combo of the kate trap and the morgue and just the push that you'd think they would have does that sound right or am i a little off yeah, I, I, I see uh, the point that you're making. I would like to mention also that mid lane, obviously, uh, with Bjergsen going for the Syndra, also has a fairly good priority because Syndra will be able to push in against this Swain. Definitely. And one thing that I also see is the tier star, which uh, sadly yeah. is the kind of the standard that Bjergsen going is, the, is that Bjergsen is going 
as well as <laughs> most other mid laners. And then uh, Singed went for the early M, or not Singed, Swain went for the early MR. So I think it does make it a little harder, right? But it's still definitely priority. Mm hmm. Okay. I, I, I completely agree. Obviously, uh, Tea of the Goddess got buffed also. I think they're playing on patch 8.4. So, uh, Tea of the Goddess is still pretty strong. And um, and obviously, someone like Swain doesn't have a lot of pushing power until he gets, uh, sorry, uh, prior to him getting the Rod of Ages. So, Tea of the Goddess, good start for Bjergsen. And it does play into the favor of that bottom lane having push priority as we talked about. Yep, and um, I don't think it makes any difference with the tier, the mid lane at all, but it actually was on 8.5 this past oh. weekend. Um, they jumped to the next one, which is very unusual for the playoffs. Um, and then lastly, this is kind of going a little off topic, but I see the top lane as kind of this, like a Hail Mary type Camille pick. How do you feel about that? I, I do like the Camille pick coming in from TSM. I think it plays very well into the idea of their composition, which is try to protect Bjorkson and Sven, while also having some engage. Um, Camille also picked up to try and push in against this Orn. Obviously, it's very hard to do so because Orn has a lot of wave clear. But if you can push in in the top side, you'll try to attract Lyra up towards there. Um, but Lyra will also want to try and go down towards the bottom side, so I, I like the pick. I can see why it could fail, because obviously uh, someone like Owen can hold his own against Camille, and I can see on my minimap that Camille really hasn't put down a lot of damage to the tower, so it makes sense for, uh, for uh, Camille to be picked, just it's very hard to pull it off. Okay, yeah, that's definitely where I think most fans... Uh of TSM probably agree that it's just sketchy a sketchy pick but it could have had a big reward if he got ahead early or even just getting that first tower down um, so moving on to the actual why I turned to this um, so you see that Swain is not ahead at the mm -hmm. current moment you got 0-0 zero, zero, the gold is even Syndra you said had priority just a little farm up but nothing too crazy for the upcoming fight so I'm going to play yeah. this fight through and we'll just talk about it after and we'll see just how this Swain pick and Clutch Gaming in general just kind of reversed everything that TSM wanted and why Swain is so pick ban in the current state. I guess you can talk through it too if you would like. Uh, I think I'll, I'll try to watch through it first yeah. so I can see what happens. Hmm. So Hakko flashes out there. So right. So we'll pause it right there. So Hakko okay. flashes out. Yeah. Then Bjergsen waits a few seconds. You can see his like mind like contemplating like is this worth the flash? Because you know <laughs> yeah. he's, he's got the balls down. He's ready to go. So for one, do you think that was a good call by Bjergsen? I, I think Bjergsen flashing right there is good enough because they do get the first blood and obviously they want to try and perhaps try and snowball it a little bit. I think it was a little bit, mm, I would say, lazy of Hacker Who that he didn't uh, flash earlier on because he had the flash up um, and if he had flashed earlier on I would s probably see uh, Cl Clutch Gaming, sorry. Uh, just back off immediately because they didn't have to fight right there. Like, you have um, Apollo down in bottom side, so you don't really want to fight against TSM because uh, the bottom lane of TSM has already uh, rotated up towards the mid lane. Yeah. Okay, and I don't know, we can't really see too much if there's any wards there, but either way, they're obviously missing, and you, mm -hmm, you, can, you yeah. can assume they're not backing at this moment um, since <laughs> Caitlyn has that BF already, so... Um, not very much gold in the pocket. So we'll keep going for a little bit here. Five seconds. And right here. So Hunter comes in flying, I believe, from the top, right? Hunter's yeah. coming through mid lane, comes over the wraith wall. And, and how do they pull this off is the big question. So I would say... 
the way for Clutch Gaming to pull this off is that you can see Lyra. He already has, uh, so he uh, he has his passive. So obviously, TSM having spent so much uh, on getting the kill onto Lyra means that now he'll be able to just revive unless TSM uses so use more resources on Lyra. On top of that, you have uh, Febivan, who I think is about to go into his ult, and obviously they are in such a close area around Febivan, so he will be able to utilize his ult completely. Uh, Bjergsen doesn't have his ult anymore, um, it's, it's not like Sven will be able to use his ult at, at all, and Call of the Forge Guard is coming in. On top of that, Apollo is also coming in now, and both of these AD carries have their BF swords, so for Clutch Gaming, they just have so many more resources to play around with, whereas TSM, uh, they don't have any really to play with anymore. Okay, so maybe a better call would have been Bjergsen if he flashes in and then just stop committing at that point. You say yes. Zach has I, I will. ult up, you say Swain has ult up, and mm -hmm. it could be a death sentence. I, I think that would have been the appropriate play right here, also considering that the Infernal Drake is up. TSM could have backed off and then get that Infernal Drake um, because of Clutch Gaming. Maybe thinking, tr uh, uh, sorry, maybe thinking twice about uh, engaging onto TSM if they go for that Infernal Drake uh, because they don't have that engage from Hakuho. Okay, very cool. So let me type some out. Okay, so. We'll move on, looking at the rest of it, and just watch the power of Swain. Okay, yeah. Yeah, for, okay, so the, the thing is also, obviously, um, I, I mentioned this earlier in the video, I think, Swain's uh, ult doesn't consume any of his mana anymore. That means that he can stay in this ult for a very long time. On top of that, Febivan had five of his soul fragments, and once he uh, stops using his ult, he will deal extra amount of damage depending on how many soul fragments he has. Because of him having all five, he's able to really burst down uh, Sven and I think partly Miffy too. So that just means that again for, for TSM that they are in such a bad position where they'll take so much damage from Febivan and well with the rest of the members from Clutch Gaming coming in, TSM can't really do anything. Yeah, so thinking about uh, patch 8.4, because 8.5 is the big Swain patch. 8.4 mm -hmm. to 8.5 had Swain. I think the big thing was just a little up on the damage, but the big thing was the Q. So like the lightning bolts, if anyone doesn't know, the lightning bolts that come out really quick in like a cone formation, those got reduced cooldown by I think two seconds early and do you think that is why he's relevant or why is he jumped up so much in priority mm, well I, I would say that I, I, I think a huge thing about Swain is just that he's his old is so good because of it not uh, consuming mana but also he's very reliable you know what you get from him um, and it's not like his his abilities cost a lot of mana. Uh, he's a very bruiser-ish, sorry, bruiser-ish champion. Can deal a lot of damage if you play him correctly too. So I think he's just a very reliable pick. And in a meta where you can uh, punish very easily because of vision being lower, I think that someone like Swain can thrive so much better. Yeah, and especially um, with the bruiser type, they can't get caught out so easily if you're walking into yes. a bush and a hakuo hook hits you as <laughs> if you're syndra you're probably dead but if you're swain you're probably fine so i guess that is a pretty big point yeah th th that's a good point too and obviously if you have the, f the five uh, soul fragments which isn't that hard to get actually it's just about i think you need to land your w or your q and then you get one soul fragment so even if you have those five soul fragments people then need to be very careful around you because you can kill them instantly if uh, you get the chance to turn onto them yep and just the extra cc i've noticed in comps uh with like thresh and zach when you have that almost guaranteed cc that you would have at least someone is going to get cc'd on the team when you have zach and thresh with that extra pullback that Swain has, it is just 
Very good. I think you can catch people out. Mm -hmm. So going through this, um, I think this is just the chase back in. Does Hanser die here? Oh, no. Th is this where? Oh, yeah, this is where Bjergsen. Yep. So if you guys missed it, Bjergsen just goes on a really long spree through the whole minimap, and then he finally gets killed by a Jin snipe really <laughs> far away. But um, moving on, yep, and Clutch Gaming obviously went on to win this game. And on the back of what I said earlier was Hakuo's Thresh from mm -hmm. an eye test, as some casters say. Um, it looked like Hakuo's Thresh was like game changing and everything. Yeah. But do you think it's a niche pick or do you think it's a strong pick overall? <laughs> Ooh, I, I would say it's a mixture of both because it very much depends on the playstyle of the support. If a support can back up the aggressive nature of a fresh, I would say that he can be a strong pick. Uh, but in some situations, he will be a niche pick. And I think for TSM, I, I it's very... Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a beautiful thing <laughs> coming from TSM that they give him over in I think it's three games right yes. where they don't find an answer to that fresh in those three games because it's, it's just fresh obviously is a strong pick but you also need to build your composition sorry yeah you need to build your composition around the fresh pick and therefore TSM not being able to find just like one answer to that fresh pick is a beautiful thing in my opinion because it just shows that Clutch Gaming they know how to play around this pick and really build a, a well-rounded team composition. Yeah so um, just to go over for a little review of everyone who hasn't mm -hmm. seen the games we got um, so the first game the kind of surprise Thresh pick in game two um, when they picked Thresh they had TSM had Varus and Braum um, in game three they had Kogma and Tom Kench and in game four they had Caitlyn and Morgana so as they went through these games, they, it slowly got more and more, or I would say less and less like impactful in the lane. Um, yeah. But it just kept going. Like even if they didn't get the lane, the kills in lane, it was just the pressure of always being there, getting those kills, getting those flashes, and yeah. So you said it is needed for a team to play around just the thresh pick in general, because um, it's yeah. a different standard pick that I think. We saw it really come out when I think Boots of Mobility came became really popular in North America when like Ole and Smoothie were no were known as their roaming supports and just running around. But we didn't see Hakuo do that as much. And do you think do you like the lane centric thresh or do you want to see him roaming around? Do you think one is easier to play, one is better in solo mm. queue? Uh, I would say for solo queue, obviously having a fresh that roams around quite a lot means that you can um, surprise, let's say, a mid laner with a fresh roaming in to the mid lane. But with that being said, for competitive, I think it depends on your team, obviously, because if you have a strong um, AD carrier like a Caitlyn, then someone like Fresh, if he just stays in lane, will be able to build up so much pressure alongside this Caitlyn. Um, if we take example of the game four, sorry, game three of the TSM and Clutch gaming series, you have um, a Fresh that's going up against Tom Kench, and obviously that means that Tom Kench will be able to eat Sven the Kogmo. But the beautiful thing that Clutch Gaming did was that they picked both the Siren and the Olaf, and that meant that even though Haku might not be able to land a good death sentence that will literally turn into a death sentence, you would still have the engage coming in from um, the Predator, from Lyra, you would have the engage from the Scion too, and therefore, yes, you might be able to eat up Sven, but you'll still be dived by T sorry by Clutch Gaming because they have all of this tankiness and the dive potential from their tanks. Yeah, it's just like when you watched the TSM games this past weekend, it seemed like they just had no answer and they were just kind of dead. You can see Sven here had 0-6-1. That was obviously a rough game. I think he died as many times this series as he did all season. <laughs> I think that stack got thrown out by Jat or Zyrene or someone. Um, but, yeah, we'll just but, go over this but yeah, last but yeah. one. 
Just, just, to, just to build a little bit on that, I would say that also for your solo queue games, uh, while it can be easier to to build a protected AD carry composition in solo queue because of the less coordination coming in from the enemy team, it's very hard to to build a protected AD carry composition in uh, in professional and and actually pull it off because. Right there for TSM, they had the Skarna in the jungle, they had the Knar in the top lane, and the Kama in the mid lane. All of that was picked to just build around Sven. And f the, the beautiful thing from Dutch Game was that they had so much engaged, so they could always get onto Sven, no matter uh, how much protection he had. And if they shut him down just once or twice, then the whole composition from TSM would fall apart. So, uh, for the solo queue games, can do so, but it's very risky to do it both in solo queue and in competitive. Okay, very cool. And yeah, you pretty much answered everything I had, except <laughs> the last question. Um, we'll end it on a good note. Should TSM just ban them? Uh, I would say um, that if you you can't find a pick. In, in the first two games, if you're not able to deal with the fresh by having a Vowers and a Braum or a Tom Kench, then I would say just ban it because I, I could imagine that Hakuho, uh, I saw a lot of people tweeting about him, I could imagine that he was a big problem. I would say I we could also imagine uh, TSM's problems coming from the jungle because Mike Young is a new player on the roster um, and he's also not necessarily the best jungler in NA, in my opinion. I, I have to admit that I haven't watched that much NA, but I did watch some last split, the the summer split of 2017, and he didn't impress me that much there. So I could imagine that TSM, they should have perhaps played more around the jungle and then just banned out the fresh if that was what allowed Clutch Gaming to make all of these plays around the map. Okay, so yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's a tough call. You obviously have all the Reddit and all the Twitch and YouTube uh, commenters just yelling ban Thresh, but it's obviously more complicated than that. You only get five, and if you let the Thresh go, then <laughs> you'll let go of Forbidden's Azir or the strong AD carry picks or the two strong top picks, Jungle. You don't want Olaf and, like, mm -hmm. there's just there's so many bans. It's just insane. I could never even imagine being a banner. But um, that sums it up for what I got. Do you have any other comments? Or you can shout out to your your brand, your social media, mm. whatever you want to do. Yeah, maybe uh, I, I would say, guys, obviously, uh, you can find me over on uh, Twitter. You can also find me on Facebook. Uh, my name is very hard to uh, to. Uh, spell out. It is Ben Wammer and it is a foreign name, but obviously you can find me over there if you want to hear more about it. I would also always uh, say go and follow all sorts of esports. I think that it's a good concept, obviously also a very nice guy, and I very much enjoyed my time being on the show. So, guys, obviously show the love to all sorts of esports. Alright, I'll pull up your Twitter so people can find you. Here he is. Um... Everyone, thank you for watching again. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this. And yeah, retweet it. Also, Igor Caesar, I think is your name. Uh, let me know because I know you're commenting almost every video. So thanks for those. And I'll see you guys next week. And thanks for the one and only host I've ever had and maybe more to come.